Welcome to The Path to Healing with me, Hazel Grogan. And my next guest is someone who I am super excited to talk to. She is a goddess from Dublin, a Tantra yoga teacher. She is a holistic sex educator, as well as being my favorite, a crusader for self-love through self-exploration. She said it herself, she's on a mission to ignite a sexual revolution in Ireland as she connects in with thousands of women across Ireland to allow them to connect back with themselves and prioritize pleasure in a way that nurtures self-awareness, connection and self-love. The beautiful Jenny Keane, welcome. Thank you. We've had a few technical difficulties today, but now we've managed to now sit down and do it properly. Um, so Jenny, just um, if you could just give people an idea of how you got into doing what you're doing now. I know for somebody who is young and beautiful as you, it's it's uh, I always say the new wave of teachers out there and you are the new wave of teachers even though you're so young and bubbly you're going to teach so many people out there of my age group and upwards so how did you get into it um so yep yeah, I uh um thank you for all the compliments by thank the you. way <laughs> I'm 34 and I feel like it, like I'm turning 35 this year and I feel like I've been having a crisis of like you know age uh, like the last couple of weeks like I don't know what's happened like I don't know where it's come from and I have to keep reminding myself like I'm young yeah, <laughs> so um but yeah no so um I suppose I got into this in my in my kind of early to mid-20s and but this this story is kind of like super vast and takes like many different roads yeah. but essentially I think um where it came down to is that I just realized that I was disconnected from my body and I was disconnected from my sexuality um and it, it happened in kind of two avenues the first one was uh because of my um my menstrual cycle um I had a, a really um very intense and I would even say go as far as say violent menstrual cycle um and I was put on the pill very young and um, when I went traveling I came off the pill just because I didn't have it anymore and I realized that the you know so much about like I realized there was something in me that was starting to change my sense of smell changed the type of people I was attracted to changed and I was like oh my goodness like is this the pill and I was like I suppose the biggest thing for me was that like what if I end up choosing like a partner for the rest of my life and I come off the pill and realize that I don't like him anymore yeah. and so you know I was like oh my goodness so anyway I didn't want to go back on the pill but I went back to the doctor because my menstrual cycle came back with even more vengeance than before and um, I said to them, uh, the only thing I don't want to do is go back on the pill. So I need other options. And after a series of tests in a couple of weeks, my only option was to take hormonal birth control. And this was something that I really didn't want for me, right? right. I'm not against this for other people. I think it's personal choices. And I'm definitely not an advocate like for, you know, uh, not listening to what works for you in your life. You know, I'm fully like, you do you. But for me personally, it wasn't something that was working. So I was already in, I'd already been uh, practicing yoga at this point and uh, very much subscribed to the energetics and the holistic um, holistic therapies and holistic approach to life. And so this kind of like led me down that path yeah. um, and uh, Tantra yoga came about because at the same time, essentially, um, uh, long story short, um, I had a tampon inside me for um, about over two months. And uh, when I came, when I realized that it was like my period stopped and I was like, what's happening here? And, um, and I, uh, and I, I eventually this tampon, like I realized there was a tampon inside me and I pulled it out. And I suppose the biggest shock for me was just this realization that I couldn't feel something in in inside me and inside my vagina and I was like can I actually feel when someone is penetrating me can I feel that yeah. and so it this this is where I say like this disconnection and so it led me um down this path of of uh going to uh, like going down alternative routes right to exploring how do I connect um, how do I return to my body? How do I uh, create a sense of aliveness in my in my womb space and my in my vagina? Is it possible? 
uh, to feel more right is a possible yeah. um yeah is a possible to experience all that and so I went down this road and uh and yeah that's where I, I suppose that's where it began maybe <laughs> yeah and where, when you say you were doing where you were doing yoga was that obviously the menstrual cycle was going a bit haywire before you started yoga but did you find when you started doing your yoga that you your your energetic body and your root chakra that it, it cleared your physical problem of your men, your menstrual cycle and uh, no because no. at that point I was I was I, I when I started uh practicing yoga I started with Bikram yoga right because right. I think like Dublin had a craze of that when yoga yeah. exploded in Dublin around that time like uh what was it 2008 or something like this yeah. like Bikram was like it was hot yeah. yoga right yeah. um I was also on the pill at that point so um I it it didn't have any effect with regards to that at all no. um I I started practicing yoga because I was experiencing stress-induced insomnia from uh from life right from work and everything like this and um my first experience of going to a yoga class was that um a woman said go to this class at 8 30 p.m and I, I basically came home put my head on the pillow and literally conked out and it was the first time in months that I had slept the whole way through and I kind of woke up being like you know like oh, oh my god yeah magic oh my yeah. god and then yeah. I became but I when I started practicing yoga I was very much I have no problem saying this for me it was about like competition I had to be sweating which is why like you know people in Bikram yoga in hot class in hot yoga classes would be like avoiding the fan I was yeah. like under the fan and I was like staring in the mirror at my face being like I'm gonna hold this pose the longest like more yeah, than yeah. anybody else you know yeah. so it was like very much a competition very different to how it evolved right but that's how I began yeah um, and then and that, that led you down the road why did you go from um Bikram yoga that's where you started off why did you go to uh, tantra yoga and for people out there tantra yoga which I actually taught over the last few uh weeks watching your videos I taught because of you what your your Instagram page where it led me to your Instagram page I'll tell you that in a few minutes but when I looked at your Instagram page I was expecting it to all to be do with yoga with sex because I taught that Tantra was all to do with Tantric yoga and, and, and sex involved when actually Tantra has nothing to do with sex at all. Is that right? It's, it's to do yeah. more of the technique. Yeah, it's uh, so th and this is like I was so uh, Tantra yoga has I think Tantra, the word Tantra, right. right, has become synonymous with sex, right? Because yeah. in the 70s and 80s, when it started coming, the practices started coming from the east to the west. And we can kind of blame America for that, right? Yeah. They, yeah. Took, uh, they took this word Tantra and it was very much only teaching the sexual practice right but tantra yoga is this complete science and it really is this umbrella term so um that incorporates uh, uh many different let's say types of yoga right yeah. uh, under under its um under its under the umbrella right, right? Others, yeah it's it's uh, it has its tradition its roots in hat traditional hatha yoga mm. um which is the yoga of duality right and yeah. the union okay hatha sun moon right uh, feminine masculine coming together right um uh, kundalini um yoga bhakti yoga uh, raja yoga um vinyasa yoga in a way uh, and then it also as well incorporates as i said it's a complete science right so it incorporates things like vastu which is um people would know it more through um uh what vastu is is more like feng shui for example yeah. right so your environment how your environment and uh you know affects the energy like of uh, how your house right and how it's set up and laid out affects yeah the overall energy of the house that you're living in and all of this and then we also have uh, Ayurveda which is the science of life which is the food that you eat what time of day you eat when you sleep all of these things how that also affects your energy um, and then we have uh, Joytish which is the science of light essentially which is astrology right so it's the science of um, light and time yeah. and uh, this is like that you know we all we and we know this right like at certain times of the month full moon new moon there are heightened energies and yeah. you would go to an astrologer in the east to find out what is the most auspicious day to get married right and yeah. um, so it's 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 an all-encompassing um uh all-encompassing science right and way of living and part of its science is also i mean it's it's full right so it also incorporates sex like one of the um sexual practices is called my tuna and my tuna means to make one right? right 
Um, and so this isn't just in terms of like a, a sexual union, right? But you can also actually go beyond this and, you know, it's to make one as in to merge, right? With something. And this is really what we talk about in Tantra where it's it's a merging or a weaving. I always say this, right? Like the outside world is the inside, inside. world. Yeah, right? or the physical yeah. body and the spiritual body. Yeah. As well, and, and merging every- the two together. Exactly, yeah. like macrocosm, microcosm, right? Yeah. And we're infinitely connected. Yeah. And uh, and tantra yoga is essentially a, a practice that, um, in terms of in term, in, in I mean, you know, when we move, right? Moving is a way of of expressing, right? Letting what is outside of you to come inside, right. and letting what is inside of you to come outside. Right. Practice allows you um, to kind of hone hone the skills of vision and perception and cognition and uh, and feeling right and articulation um, and uh, and in and in that way we're learning how to feel energy move in our bodies right or prana right yeah. and when we do this it's essentially learning how the kind of the how the body the mind the emotions talk to you right because prana is the kind of currents and subcurrents upon which everything that is alive in you right now is moving right yeah, so the yeah. thoughts the mind um your heartbeat right yeah. whether you're in a stressed or whether you're stressed or whether you're relaxed um how the blood is moving through your veins um uh, how quick you're speaking, you know, or how yeah. slow you're speaking, all of these things, right? It's it's all moving on different waves of prana. And so the practice allows you to kind of hone your attention to the movements of the mind, the movements of your emotion, the movement of your physical body, yeah. um, so that you can learn the language that your body is using to speak to you. And yeah. like anything, once you learn that language, you know how to speak back to it. So it yeah. gives you access to power right power and control so that you know that when you're experiencing states of stress you know what to do right and your body knows what to do because it's it's learned this in a yoga practice right to um essentially like trigger the mechanisms to bring you back to a place of homeostasis or or uh or balance balance right yeah yeah yeah. yeah yeah and it's really and it's really um and I'm, i've seen this so many times before like so many of my clients come when they actually get this aha moment they understand what energy is and say for instance they have you know one session on the bed and i say to them give me a bit of um uh your life story tell me what's happening and they give you the you know the traumas the trials and all that and they understand that they actually hold so much of their energy because a lot of my clients will be women uh, women who have come who maybe have lost children who have you know had um, uh, difficulties getting pregnant put women who have had trials and traumas when they were younger through bullying that they suppress their energy push it down into their root chakra and so much of the energy that we store especially as women is right down in the root chakra and like so important especially when we understand what what your concept is through your, your yoga as well as through your self-exploration what you you talk about on your um your insta is so important for us to connect back especially with the root chakra yeah it's really important for us to because understanding the part of us that is uh, the sexual part of a woman understanding that we actually as women and maybe it's because we're irish women and the shame and all that part of it goes behind and none of us want to even talk about or even use the word vagina even use the word period it's like so you, you give it different names because we're so embarrassed to actually use those words because where it's it's the conditions that we've had all of these years made that was dirtier it was something that we have to be shameful of mm-hmm. and this uh, this uh, root chakra for me um i know from all of my clients is where most of the energy is it's all blocked in the root chakra yeah and i mean uh, like you mentioned a couple of things there that's really important i mean in so my background is also as a as a somatic therapist and and trauma therapist right yeah. in terms of the work in, in in terms of the sexual work that i do yeah and um, so uh and you know this is when we talk about um trauma like it's not just like even uh it's not just about cognition, right? It's a body memory. Yeah. Um, and it's not something generally when we have a trauma and these, and when we say trauma, sometimes we can think of like the traumas with the capital T, right? But these are, we experience daily traumas, right? When we, when we walk, um, when we go for a walk and someone beeps the car and our body is like, oh God, do I have to yeah. protect myself, right? That's a, a mini trauma. When we have a fight, 
with our partner, that's a mini trauma, right? And so we experience these all the time. And sometimes they're, they're, it's, uh, this is about your, essentially what it is, is that when we experience it, it's about your body or your organism begins to um, recalibrate the world as essentially an unsafe place to live in, right? Yeah. And, and, our, and our body holds this as a memory and not because it's like trying to hurt us or trying to cause us suffering, but um, because it's it's trying to keep us safe, safe. right? It's yeah. like, let's remember this, right? Yeah. And so the beautiful thing is that when it comes to uh, trauma, that it's not enough just to talk, right? Talk therapy. And we know this from um, like science and research and especially like in the, as people become more open to talking about trauma, that it's not just um, something that you can talk out, right? Because it, as I said, it lives in the body because we are, you know, uh, we are living in a sensate experience, right? So it doesn't just happen at the level of like talking or even at the level of the mind, you know, um, there's a uh, smell involved there's sight involved there's yeah. touch involved right and so all of like when we have a car crash you know all, like the sensate but like the sensate experience it's the whole experience and so um uh this is really where we start to um when we start to do proc practices right body practices allow us to, uh, uh allow us to kind of help um release that release it and also rewrite that story right but through yeah. movement through our body right through expression yeah. um and uh and i think that's it's really important like to uh for people to understand that you know and yeah. this is where um any kind of movement practices allow us allow us you know to to rewrite those stories and then the other yeah. stories that you mentioned like shame and yeah. cultural uh cultural you know points of view i mean this is where you know I always say like that every day, right? We ingest specific beliefs um, uh, about um, uh, that we don't even, aren't even aware of, right? About our sexuality, for example, like in this context, right? Our sexuality that we aren't even aware of. And suddenly we start to uh, live by these beliefs and sometimes they aren't even ours, you know? Um, and, uh, and we all, and I call them, I like to call them like sexual scripts essentially, right? Um, and we don't even know that we have them until we start to speak about them, right? That it's kind of like, oh, you know, sex is an obligation, you know, um, and it's something that I have to, you know, uh, give to my partner in order to keep the relationship, relationship right? alive. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, but that's also, is a, it's a sort of a generational thing. I know, um, you know, last year when we went into this whole experience, I had did so much meditation and my guys were saying we have to release the old energies the old generational energies that are coming down from our our, our our parents our grandparents that is actually ingrained in each of the generations that then is taught to us and we think it's the way and then we now have to get to a point where say for instance me I'm a mother of four children and I'm now trying to go no no, no we need to change that because this is not has not worked up to this point so we need to change going forward for our the next generation so they aren't f filled with shame they aren't filled with all of the stuff that we had yeah and because also as well the 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 you know shame is this it's such a powerful word yeah, right yeah. It's this uh it's this powerful kind of master emotion yeah. um that really uh thrives on the fear that we're not enough right and yeah. shame is everywhere and as you said like it's passed down through generations through society through culture so on a, it's passed down like at an individual level in terms yeah. of like you know who our peers are and um, who our friends are who we grew up with and then it goes to national level and then to global level right yeah. and I, I you know although it's not inherent in our in our nature we still undergo this powerful process of um learning shame through our conditioning right yeah, yeah. and you know i always like say this like it's like you know um shaming others is so prevalent that it you know it's really rare to meet somebody that uh has has not, not been, been shamed yeah, on yeah. The receiving end yeah. of it right because most of us especially as women have been like slut shamed or we have been shamed or i i heard one of the quotes one time and said about you know how say for instance we look at um it's okay for a woman to have that self-exploration to have masturbation uh, in a video and the men looking at it it's really it turns them really on but when we go in as women and want to have self-exploration or have time to ourselves oh it's so shameful you've got to close the door 
Mm. Like that there's this part of it that is, oh no, we got to do this in secret because it's not all right for us to do that when it actually is so all right for us to do it. We need to really connect back with that and understand that we need to have that time with ourselves and have that time of understanding our own body. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. and this is like the idea, right? Because once we learn shame, the thing is is that we self-propagate it, right? By shaming ourselves. And self-shaming is something that's also so ingrained in us that we don't notice it. Um, But what is noticeable is an erosion of our confidence, right? That feeling that something is just fundamentally wrong with us. Um, And we learn that kind of there is nothing that we can do about it. So very often we just give up. And like before we even try, we just stop, right? Or we just don't try. Um, And so it's, yeah, this is where like, especially when it comes to our sexuality, right? Um, because even in this space I mean when it comes to anything to do with our sexuality it's vulnerable and yeah. um, it's it's probably the most vulnerable part of ourselves because our sexual set we are all these like sexual sensual beings and yeah. this is how we express ourselves in the world it's how we penetrate the world that like we penetrate the world through our senses right so yeah. tantra yoga again and it's how the world penetrates us and yeah. so there is this and this is what i mean when we talk about like being a sexual sensual being it's not just about sex right but it's about sp- expressing who we are and this kind of core nature that moves from the inside out yeah so there is this huge kind of vulnerability and risk right risk yeah. of being seen yeah. risk of being known um and and uh and yeah, all the stuff. Yeah. The it, it, it's like, it, for, for me, I always teach my clients, like learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. And what most of them come me, I have so many clients who come and they say, oh, you know, I'm, especially the single ones who are out there looking for the soulmate. And I'm saying, no, maybe make yourself the soulmate first, that you yourself, complete yourself first. And when you complete yourself and you're wholly complete, that somebody else comes in, brings, adds that bit of a flavor to you. But that also works on a sense of, finding out about your own body feeling how it feels you what you like what you do but that part of it especially my generation of women is like oh god don't go there don't even talk about the masturbation word please and you can't as I say even the language of how it is you can't even use that that those words because people are like ah oh, nearly choking when they're saying it oh yeah well also as well because i mean as we get older we also have to battle ageism essentially right yeah and- like we're told that um you know our sexuality and our beauty has an expiration date and again this is the belief that we ingest like from the outside it's why everyone's like you know anti-wrinkles and all that stuff right how do I keep myself young and youthful um and uh and we deny the kind of beauty and the journey that comes with age right Uh, like I don't know about you but like (laughs) they're like as much as 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 much as I look at people in their in their mid 20s and early 20s like I never ever have the desire and say like oh that's great you know they're so young and they've got their whole life I I never have a desire to really go back there and relive that yeah. life I'm like I like where I am now you know yeah. like I like that I've learned all those lessons and I like that I can express myself and say this is what I want in the bedroom or this is what I want outside yeah. the bedroom you know and uh, and you know I think as we get older and like women that I've met and the work that I do um like really learning to to claim and reclaim uh what and redefine right what it means what what it means to be sexy right yeah. um that it's not this thing that's only for the youthful right and the yeah. young um and uh, and I think there's something uh really really powerful in that um I mean even the idea of masturbation um and I mean this is like in the workshops that I teach I teach about the developmental stages of our sexuality because I really believe that once you understand so just like we have you know developmental stages as a human being right we're like an infant and then we're a baby or like a and then we're a teen a child and a teen yeah. our sexuality also goes through these developmental stages as yeah. well and I think once you understand the story of your sexuality you understand uh where you might need to rewrite it you know yeah. um and I think it it gives you a powerful tool for really um living right yeah. really living fully you know and for for me looking at you so like I've had so many conversations with my friends who are my age right we're walking and talking I'm talking about sexual energy and they're like oh I'm nearly getting sick when we're talking right and a few of my friends who, who said 
oh, have you watched this one? Have you watched this girl? I'm thinking, like, I wouldn't be out there you know, searching up because for me in my life, I have perfectly healthy sexual uh, uh, relationship with my husband, never have any even woes where I have to go looking to see somebody to help it out. But when you understand how, because I'm coming at it from an energy point of view, I understand that when you're not, when that energy is blocked down there and how important it is when you have a proper orgasm, when you have that, when you, because I understand it because I can see it with color, when all of my chakras open at once, literally within a second in, in the midst of an orgasm, you see these beautiful colors. So you can connect in with the spiritual energy of it too. So when, when I, I can't get my head around women out there who are not, exploring that part and they're like oh no no just you know wham bam thank you ma'am on a friday night or a saturday night and that's it and i'm like what because i think that when you really open your shackles um, and you you do it in that way where it's all to do with finding yourself first i think that the you you look young you look it, it will ooze out of you no matter whether you're 50 or you're 60 you know do you understand what i'm saying because yeah. I'm, I'm looking at you and you're the, the young um crew coming up all these new um children that are coming these high vibration children that are coming in here to teach people this is what it's about and to see you doing it and i'm like oh my god she's the balls of steel to actually come out and do it but yet when you look at your page and you look at people who are commenting back and you put up the, the question and they answer to so many people who are actually answering back and together they're all helping each other that they're not only on their own it's not just them having that problem yeah, yeah. I, I always like to say like that change happens through inspiration or desperation. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think this is why, like, I mean, this is like everyone that comes to me is like, is in, in the, the yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Um, and I, yeah, but I, I just think like, I mean, there's so many different ways to talk about it you know like uh you talk about like colors and and, and opening and, and feeling everything open at once and for me as well like i like to understand like what's happening physiologically right yeah. Um, what what does what is actually happening there and so like for me it's like i you know would feel all of these things like let's say on an energetic sense and then i was yeah. like right but like what's what does that actually kind of work it out logically yeah yeah what yeah does that actually work because sometimes i for me this is where i say like you know i'm fully subscribed to like the magic of the world and it's like tell me this person's a witch and i'm like all over i'm like yeah i yeah. believe that you know yeah. but at the same time i'm also there's a there's, there's a good part a good chunk of me that's skeptical enough that keeps me in my mind yeah. and i think that this is where um, education is so important because education can give your sexuality and your experiences context yeah. and I always feel like it, it helps and I mean this is why I went down this road right it helps for me it helps to kind of open the trap door of my mind so that I can drop into my body, body. Right? yeah and I understand so like especially as well like when I'm in a sexual experience and say um and say uh you know we're talking about female ejaculation and then there's part of me that's going like oh my god I need to pee I need to pee I need to pee like stop 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 right but yeah. then understanding that's actually an orgasm and understanding that's not pee it's it's yeah. uh, it's a fluid right in the body and understanding where that comes from allows you to kind of open the door and go this is not and understand okay. it and it's and, and understand that it's okay that there's nothing bad about it because, yeah because like you say for instance um i saw some of your uh comments where, where people were uh commenting in about you know faking orgasms and do you have you ever faked orgasms and i was like i couldn't believe the amount of comments that women were faking them. i was like why would you have to fake it yeah. But there's so many out there who are not really connecting into their real the experience of what they're going through that they actually have to fake it. Yeah, but I, and I think this is the thing as well. It's like not to um, and this is where I would say like it's like to even to watch. Right. Because it's like not to shame people that are because sometimes the idea that like, you know, um, they're faking an orgasm, it's coming from this, you know, uh, like there's a goodness in as well. Sometimes it's to please the partner, yeah. right? Exactly. Because they yeah. don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Um, sometimes it's because they're just, they're, maybe they're experiencing pain and they want to end sex early and they don't know how to express, right? Or that uh, they, or else as well, like, but that they don't think it's going to happen. So it's it's just, uh, this is, and, and, and because of what, what images we've been given about sex, like what it should look like, what it should sound like, 
what it should feel like. Yeah. We think that this is how we have to act. This is how we have to express. This is what an orgasm sounds like. Yeah. And even like so many women would come to me like in my orgasm works that I hold and they would say like, well, I'm here because I don't know if I've ever had an orgasm. Yeah. And I will start saying like, okay, um, have you ever experienced this? Have you experienced this? Have you experienced this? And they're like, oh yeah, I have. And I'm like, they're all orgasms. Right. And the thing is, is that, um, and again, this is where education, education. comes in, right? Yeah. Um, uh, that an orgasm doesn't just look one particular way, right? I always say that. And again, this is where we talk about Tantra yoga and how Tantra yoga is really beautiful for helping us to work with energy because orgasm is energy, right? Yeah. It's, it's a, an electrical response that you experience in and through your body. And maybe it, it expresses itself on emotions, like where you cry and have like a cry-gasm, let's say, right? Or maybe you're laughing, or maybe, you ex or maybe you're expressing through your throat, or maybe you're expressing through complete silence and stillness, or maybe you, it's expressing itself through goosebumps on your body, right? A skin yeah. orgasm. Like, so it's, we have all of the, these uh, different ways that energy um, moves through us, through heat, through coolness right yeah. and um and it's about uh teaching uh people that there is more than one way and that like you know orgasm essentially as well it's like orgasm moves and i always say this like it moves at the natural speed of life and if you want to know what that looks like right put your phone away go yeah. for a walk in nature and experience experience nature right that yeah. orgasm can look um or an orgasm can look and feel like like lightning, like a thunderbolt in the sky, like, you know, yeah. or it can be as slow and as uh, delicate as a flower that is taking its time to rise from the ground and then open and unfurl, right? Yeah. It takes time or else it can be like the waves, right? On an ocean. Sometimes it's still, sometimes it's tumultuous, sometimes it's a tsunami, you yeah, know, course, it's yeah. over the blink of an eye. Sometimes there are waves that just keep going and going and going. So it's uh, to understand, I think, orgasm is to understand um nature right the nature of life the speed of life right and uh and this is where like a lot of uh people who are like oh you know it's like like for me the faking part of it comes from the ideas that we've been given given right? and so, i suppose that's true true like porn and you people who look at porn and they see it you know as something that this is the way it's it's supposed to look like and that's one of the, the reasons that i wanted to talk to you is because i have my own i have four sons and i have four children who are growing up now with this you know it's constantly connected to the phone it's like this 2d thing and it's seeing it in a way that um is very clinical, very clean, uh, very skinny girls, not a blade of hair, something that's so not real in real life. And I want for, for to edu be able to, as an adult, educate my own children going forward that they, to try and steer them away from um, that, as in porn, as we know it for the last many years or so, and to try to show them what real love is and experiencing love in a, in a uh, making love scenario mm -hmm. than making porn yeah and that I, I that's it's so powerful right because that just comes from um I think it's all of, all of our responsibilities right not just parents right but yeah. everyone that are that is around children right yeah. to learn how to have these I like I want to say hard conversations they're not hard it's just that they're not normal right yeah. And I really believe that in terms of, you know, talking to our kids about sex, it should be this ongoing conversation that is happening all the time. Yeah. If you're talking to your children, you know, um, like young children, I'm I like from the time that they're, they're able to talk, questions, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you're opening this channel of communication where they will come to you first, yeah. right? And uh, because I I I, uh, I said this actually even on Instagram earlier that you know um they're saying that kids as young as six and we could believe this with the phones right yeah. are coming across porn, um and by the time they get a little bit older like nine ten eleven they already know everything right yeah. and if you aren't controlling the conversation then somebody else is whether yeah. that is mainstream porn whether that is their friends whether yeah. it, because they're finding this information out I don't know if you're I remember finding this information out yeah. like me when I was younger you know yeah. and not fully understanding it and um, and so like the sooner that you can start talking to, to kids the better when it comes to very specifically to your example with regards to um the boys kids about porn to boys yeah. about porn yeah. right I mean that is just like learning to say like okay you know 
So do you know the way like, you know, we have um, action movies, movies on TV, yeah. right? And the movies are like full of drama and like everyone's all done up and their characters. And this is, that is mainstream porn. It's yeah. not real life. It's an action movie, right? Yeah. Uh, and you teach them this because then they know then, oh, okay, that this isn't real. Um, and then there are uh, healthy um, porn options that are coming yeah. available. And it's also yeah, as I well, watched like, that. I watched your your talk on that with Cindy Gallup, and that was such yeah. an eye opening um, talk because you it, it, then it made me think. Oh my gosh, they're actually so right. Like when you look at it in what we what we've grown up with. I mean, I'm from generation when it was magazines, <laughs> you know, what I mean? there was and VHSs yeah. that were hidden. Do you know? And like and and even in them days, it's it's so different now. But then again, when it going forward now with my children's generation, it's the problem is it's so. Accessible. Accessible. Yeah, I've had it with my own children. Like we have all uh, parental par parental guard um, on our on our phones to make sure that they can't access stuff like that, and tells us when they're even even trying to Google it. But it's it's so um, you know I've I've had my own friends tell me that their children are as young as seven and eight are actually googling it because they're hearing it in school. Yeah, and then we're all I think we've all had the same video. I've had it, and my kids have had it, and my probably my parents had it. That it's the same sex education that you get in a school, which is actually just really teaching you about how not to get pregnant, where how to um to have babies, what your puberty, all of that part, but how not to get pregnant. They're not actually teaching you real sex education, and yeah. we have to do that as adults teaching our children. Absolutely, like I, I think it's I think you know educating your kids about sex starts at home, right? Yeah. Um, I tried to go into schools like a couple of years ago and they were having none of it. Like I was like, this is so important. We need to teach kids about yes. this, you know, uh, about like pleasure based sex education. They do it in the Netherlands, like really beautifully. Um, yeah. They have like in terms of like, you know, the way we, well, the way we used to, the way we had sports week in school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have like the week of love right and they yeah. teach kids like how to, you know, uh, express themselves, communicate and um, um, about boundaries, consent, all the body autonomy, like all of these really powerful things um, and, and about love, right? So it's, it's pleasure-based sex education. Yeah. We really have the, the kind of like risk factor, right? So it's all about like the avoidance because we think that like, if we, if we teach them that sex is about pleasure, then we're going to encourage them to have it have earlier, you know, younger yeah. and all yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. stuff. And it's, it's actually not true. The studies are saying that the opposite actually uh, takes effect, right? Right? Yeah. because then you are you are teaching children how to become emotionally mature um and 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 this information is out there they are becoming sexualized younger and younger because yeah. I mean, because of the Instagram, let's yeah, break yeah. Instagram, TikTok you know, and all of that. Like I, I see my youngest, you know, watching TikTok and I see something. It, it depends on what he goes into to look at. And then all of a sudden it's like us. We go into something on Instagram, we go and look at it and then it starts to send you all other stuff that what you might be interested in. And I have like this fear that, oh my God, my, my poor little 12 year old is going to be thrown into the depths of hardcore porn. And I'm like, how the hell am I going to teach him what's not? But then it's so... Um, like so true what you're saying is like teaching the adults first and when you teach the adults then they can teach their own children absolutely because yeah. if the, the hardest part of this is like actually having the conversation and for most yeah. of us we don't know how to have that conversation with ourselves yeah. we don't know how to have that conversation with our partners with our loved ones yeah um, and so how do we expect to have that conversation with kids yeah. so when you start to um work right with all of these things like inside of yourself like in terms of your shame uh, where shame is yeah. and what where shame holds uh has a hold over your sexuality uh where where you believe that it might be dirty or only for a specific purpose or you know all of these things um that you can start then to to talk to and um, it becomes a natural conversation actually yeah. but the more you do it the, yeah. yeah the more you do it and the more you do it with yourself first and you understand that it's okay like even like me saying the word masturbation I'm like oh I'm nearly choking because it's taking me this length of time to say even I had this conversation with my friend today it's like how many words do we have for vagina actually saying the word vagina it's like why can we not just say it there's so many other words out there because it's like this oh I can't say that word and it's really sort of come on now where people are now more looking say to people like you who are the influencers out there who are doing it in a normal social sense and not having the shame and that's yeah. really lovely to see 
Yeah, yeah. There's so many of you out there who are doing this and it's make, making it normal for it. And like I've seen from the comments, I've seen that there's so many people that are like, even I booked into your course for orgasms online with my friend for her 40th birthday. I said, I'll do it with you. I'll what do it you with do? you. <laughs> and she's like, what do you mean you'll do it with me? And I was like, the two of us will do it together. And it was so funny because I was watching the, the video of the girl with her friend sharing like, what's it going to be like? Oh my God, what's it going to be like? Is she going to be doing it on the camera? And you were just choking laughing. So it's, <laughs> Because you know what, it's it's something that it's lovely to be able to understand and from my point of view, be able to then teach my clients coming. At, like we've all had the experiences of, you know, going to the Anne Summers parties and going to the and hush, hush, and what did you buy? What Like make it more normal to be able to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, this is the thing, like I, this is what I love about, I mean, you know that proverb, like it's like uh, teach um teach a man and you teach the individual and you teach an individual mm. teach a woman or uh, educate a woman and you educate a nation right or yeah. you educate whatever like it's like this yeah. global thing because and it's so true especially with sexuality yeah. right because once we learn something right as women like we instantly start talking about it yeah. right uh, and then it goes like you know it filters like into all aspects of our life you know yeah. and like I I think what's beautiful about this is that like I have like people in my workshops who are you know mothers and daughters coming um and they're like and I get to read the most beautiful messages of people being like you know you've completely changed the dinner conversation or I so I asked my like I was in a newspaper last year and my friend uh, was a, a, abroad at the time and she texted her dad and said go and get the newspaper immediately my friend is in it and then he opened the newspaper he said is your friend talking about orgasms and she's like yeah and she goes and and she goes and now myself and my dad talk about sex you know yeah yeah so all this stuff like happens yeah but, but it's it, but it's because it's so good to bring it into our normal chat and and exactly what you said women will cackle. They'll all talk about it. And then like I have had conversations with my clients and they go home and say, hey, do you remember you were saying that about, you know, the orgasm? And Because I would talk about the onk, the onking symbol mm -hmm. and how the onking energy, bringing the energy up through you. And when you bring it back up and loop it back into yourself. So it's bringing back that sexual energy to you and teaching women how to do that. And they're like, oh my God, I did that, Hazel. That was amazing. Yeah, because yeah. they, because if you didn't, if I didn't say it to them and get them to understand about their own energy force and their own sexual energy. And on say, for instance, on your um, comments, I saw that was lots of men were getting involved and se then sending in their comments too, which is good because you're getting also the male perspective of it. Because women were saying, oh yeah, we, we like to have no hair, laser, you know, total laser. And the men were like, actually, no, we actually like a bit of hair. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's good to get yeah. the two aspects that the men are in getting involved as well in the background, even though some some of them won't say they are. Do you yeah. have met, on the on the courses that you're doing at the moment? The um, the one that I'm booked onto is all women, but you obviously have for male and female. Do you do with that? There's there's. there's uh, I was doing it last year. I was doing workshops for men only, and then I was right. also doing workshops for couples. Um, but at the moment, at this moment in time, I've I've just pulled back to women only. Um, I will introduce yeah. uh, the couples uh, stuff again. But at yeah. this moment in time, it's again just like managing my own energy, and and that's like I suppose like learning online is so different, right? Because in yeah. in person, I was doing these workshops, and I mean because of the space, I would only have like twenty two or thirty women in yeah. the class, right? Whereas now it's yeah. like hundreds, right? Yeah. And um, so in terms of managing my own energy, I was like, I have to streamline for a moment in time. And uh, there's so much that I want to do. Right. And it's really hard for one person yeah. to kind of get everything out. And talk. I always say, like, I just want to I want to find a way to just squeeze my head out onto the Internet. Like when it yeah. takes the time, you know, and I suppose um, in the way of having this experience for us, like, say, for instance, even with me, I would have been a very in person person as in meeting my clients, doing my Reiki all day, every day, where this experience for us has pushed us out into the mainstream media to be able to talk about things that might not be talked about. And then even again, say, for instance, you it also pushes you out there to to a global part, part where people can come at, come to you in their thousands and over one hour and teach so many people in one one hour yeah it's overwhelming actually because it's like yeah. I remember like even last year the workshops sold out like when I had a yeah. hundred participants sold out within a couple of hours and then I was like oh my god and then I got like you know you get that unlimited participant thing on yeah. Zoom, and yeah. I had like I'd have between 250 to 800 women in a workshop at a time yeah. and I think like you know that's in terms of orgasm online I just think that that number in and of itself is so powerful because it teaches women right that yeah. first of all they're not alone right and not only they're not alone it's like 
<laughs> like you're not alone, right? Yeah. There's so many that are people are interested in this because yeah. oftentimes we can think like that it's a little bit like, you know, oh God, like uh, the it's, it's a little bit risky, right? Doing something yeah. like this. And uh, I think it teaches it like just how normal it is. And I think online, what's so powerful about this work in terms of, um, in terms of how I do it is that that it, it meant right because I know the workshop isn't scary I know that like anyone who goes is going to benefit hugely from it yeah. but if you're again looking from the outside you're like I don't know what's exactly going to happen you know yeah. I there's really nothing in the description here like yeah. is she can take her pants off yeah. is she can stick her fingers up her vagina yeah and <laughs> um, like all these like scary questions right yeah. and the powerful thing about being on on zoom right is that like you can go go on uh -oh. And turn your camera off and no one knows you're there take your name off yeah yeah and that's that's a good thing because it means that people who are scared and people who really do want to know and people who really want to get in touch with their bodies and understand what they're doing or what they're doing right or wrong can then learn learn from others that it's not just them on their own they're learning from you and then they're also learning in a such from what i can see and from what the comments are in such a bubbly you know um energetic level uh, and and then also go home to their husbands and then you know use all that information that knowledge to be able to learn about themselves as well as teach it, teach it in their own sexual uh, energies mm -hmm. together do you know yeah, absolutely. Do, you, do you find that um do you I was, I was thinking that the other day would would you have women who are on watching it and have their husbands in the background wanting to, <laughs> wanting to have a listen yeah I'm like I'm absolutely like I get those questions all the time I I tend to say like the space is for women only, only and that yeah. just keeps it contained right yeah um but I mean obviously like if cameras are off I don't really know no. who's there yeah, or what's there fair. um but for me it's it, but for me the workshop is very much geared like this is information for women yeah. um for them to access their their sexuality first and get in touch with their body first yeah um and uh and yeah and so that's really what the intention of it is and it's how I teach it so regardless I mean regardless of who or what turns up like it's not I don't really mind on 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 one side right but for me it's more so to keep the safe the space uh safe right in one yeah. in one regard because I have um uh we have like a Q&A at the at the end right and the Q&A is incredible like in terms of like women who are just opening up and sharing and what I find so powerful is that like there'll be about like 10 questions asked and whatnot but like and you've hundreds of people on the call yeah. um but but whoever is asking the question isn't just ask they might just think they're asking for themselves yeah, but, but it goes there to so many others so many people yeah you know? yeah it's like and coming to me for a reiki session and one person asks a question and then they ask it on a, on a reiki course and they say and that they, they they have people at the end going oh my god i was going to ask that question so glad you asked it because you asked it for me so people are learning from it so in your um your online this is the one that the next one that's coming up is the third of april is that right it's probably four yes, it is, yeah is it no, no 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 it's like because i have like i have the participant numbers up high yeah and in that so would you so for um for the viewers out there who are going to be uh might, might be interested in this it's called orgasms, or online. It's or orgasms online yeah so there's another one 30 days to oh is that the other one yeah that's the month month program. Yeah. yeah so um, the like third orgasm online is very much like around pleasure mindset right. um so it really works at the level of the mind and uh it's it's really powerful for us that like just unlocking right the mind and allows you to drop into the body and the 30-day program it sounds scary like someone was just like i thought the 30 days to orgasm was going to be like masturbating for 30 days 30 straight days, yeah. and like no absolutely not it's uh, i think the name is a little bit scary but i was kind of like when i was thinking about it, i was like i don't know what else to call it you know yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. but essentially it's really working it's a kind of a science-based somatic approach to sexuality so uh if people have and it's so powerful for like essentially working with sh if people have shame in their body like in terms of shame over and um, what their body looks like and, yeah. and just you know like if you're one of these people who's like always in your head right it allows you to get into your body it works with rewriting sexual scripts that people might have um, and also helps you to redefine self-pleasure um, and reconnect to your body in a way that I think uh, very few people get a chance to experience in their lifetime. Yeah. And like I have the women who have come on the course, like I, I, they're always just like, yeah, like this, this, I, and I always, I like to keep it this way, right? Cause it keeps, I think, you know, the people who are coming like really are the ones that are supposed to be there. They're called to it. Right. Yeah, of course. It's just like, this was, 
way more than I expected, expected yeah. you know? So yeah. it, it, I always say like, it's a course that will change your life in the most beautiful of ways. And uh, I, 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 from what I've seen happen is that it definitely happened. Yeah, because I can see from the comments, you mentioned people who message back and say, oh my God, that was amazing. You do breast massage or something as you do at the end, is it? And is uh, that- not at the end. No, it's like, it's part of, uh, it's part of the okay. practices that I teach. So um, it's, and again, it's just different, uh, different types of practices, uh, working mm-hmm. on boundaries, like what are your yeses, what are your noes, learning how to expand your pleasure potential and your oh, sense body, right? Yeah. And um, and your sensory experience, uh, connecting to your yoni and to your, to your like vulva and your vagina and, yeah. uh, and having, um, a relationship essentially, like so many of us don't have a relationship with our, with our body. We don't look right at our, yeah. we don't look at our vulva until there's yeah. a problem. Right. And we feel a dot and we're like, is that an ingrowing hair? Or is it something else? Oh my yeah. God. You know, because I, I remember seeing that on, um, I think it was the goop lab where they had like one of the set, one of this, um, episodes in the goop lab. Did you watch it? It was on Netflix and it was I've on- never watched this. And I it definitely was, need it to. was so funny because, it, well, it was funny again. And I, so many of my friends were like, oh my God, did you see the one where they all have the mirrors and they're all like looking at themselves because most women won't look there like, yeah. oh no, no, it's okay. I'll get it waxed. I'll do this and I'll just make it lovely and pretty, but I'm not going to look at it. Yeah. And it's amazing how, you know, they, 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 they cannot connect to it in that way and it's such for me I, I especially as a mother it's such a spiritual portal when you think about of you've now bur- I've birthed four children out of that spiritual por- portal so for me it's so important for the women but yet we don't want to look at it yeah I don't yeah. want to have an ex- we don't want to have that full connection with it and it's ours do you know yeah yeah so, um look at the 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 next course is April the a- April the third and that is orgasms online. And then there's 30 days orgasms. That's already, that's already ongoing, is it, you just say? Um, well, it's ongoing now, I, but the next one is starting in April. On the April the 18th, isn't that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And then also then for your yoga, are you because obviously we're not able to, because we're still in restrictions here, for your yoga, when do you do your yoga? Do you do that online? Do you do that? I do it online, yeah. But at the moment, uh, so I have classes on YouTube that you can yeah. go and try out. And I also as well, like I like to do them kind of like five days in a row, you know, because yeah. I think you really need to experience it uh, like over like more than once right oh, to really yeah, get okay. the full effect of it um and uh and so that's on youtube and yeah. then i i kind of put out like um every now and again i'll start to i'll put out new classes or whatever so it's like if you find me on insta oh, you can find you on insta he- hello jenny in and when you're back and obviously back out of the restrictions where is it that you practice from um I don't know because it's changed now yeah. so I used to be in yoga studios but I I won't be going back into yoga studios um because of the whole social distancing and how it's going to be uh no not not actually it's just that um I I haven't fully just dis- I suppose I don't know what what it looks like right in terms yeah. of going back out into the real world yeah but yeah. like uh I really enjoy um I really enjoy the online space yeah. I really enjoy that and I I suppose if I was to go back into I definitely really miss you know in-person events and stuff but I think they'll be more so like workshops and events and trainings rather than regular classes let's say yeah because like even for me like my I, I'm doing Reiki uh, courses and I used to be able to do them for my space at the back and now I can't because of social distancing you have to try and make a bigger space you have to try and put people into pods you're like oh my god it's way too stressful let's stay <laughs> online so look at Jenny thank you thank you thank you I know we had a few technical difficulties earlier on oh, no. so much because I really do think that this is something that we all should be talking about as women um and i really do think that anyone out there who is really interested in all of this and uh self-exploration is as is a go for all of my clients now going forward and i think that jenny is uh somebody who has beautiful energy so much knowledge and because she's coming at it from a point of view of actually having the experience and being experienced in it i think that you um are one to watch over the next few next few months and weeks especially when we're locked up in this house there was loads of time at home on our own so jenny thank you thank you thank you so much i'm so grateful for your beautiful energy thank you thank you so much <laughs>